All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast, Week 8 Edition, 2019's Fantasy Football Season. I'm Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me, as usual, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Oh, hey, man. Just uh, getting my postcards ready for Christmas for the Eric Ebron fan club. <laughs> nice. All right, man. Uh, how's that, like two people in that? Uh, there's three of us, thank you. Three of you, all right. How do you become a member of that? Um, I'll talk to you offline. All right. <laughs> uh, not not safe for work. <laughs> it's it's very not safe for work, yeah. Fair enough. All right, man. Uh, exciting day of football that we had today. Um, tonight we're watching the kickoff here, the third quarter of the Chiefs and Packers. Had a little technical difficulties, so couldn't get this in during halftime. It is Chiefs 17, Packers 14. I'll be honest, man. I'm a little surprised with the score. I thought for sure the Packers were going to come out here and <clears throat> excuse me, take care of business in Kansas City without Mahomes, but uh hasn't been the case. What's your thoughts here, man, on this? I mean, they started out doing pretty well. I mean, it's 14 nothing pretty quick, and then KC, I guess, calmed down a little bit and, you know, it's got a game of it. I mean, it's the NFL, so just about – just about all games, you know, barring some, you know, ridiculousness are, are usually pretty close at some point in time um, in the second half. Now, not all games, but so it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, the Chiefs, even without Mahomes, are still pretty solid. Yeah. And of course, the Packers, uh, I don't I don't know if he's come back, but Aaron Jones got hurt in the first half. So just another injury for that team. Uh, it's just piling up quick and. Rodgers, once again, you know, starting off hot, but then cooled down pretty quickly. So we'll see if he can pick it back up here in the second half. I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. It's looking like a typical Rodgers game that last week was a, a bit of an outlier, it seems like. But let's move on here. <clears throat> Start off with the Hawks, the Seahawks, and the Falcons. Uh, Seahawks took this one 27 20 on the road. Um, you know, I mean, just an all around good game again for the Seahawks. You know, nothing. Awesome, but I mean, you know, you'll, you'll take Carson running back one numbers, you know, 90 yards and a touch, lock it six for 100. Um, DK Metcalf was uh, the star for the receiver getting receiving core getting two two touchdowns there. One was like super wide open, it was just kind of a joke. Um, quick thoughts on the Seahawks. No, I mean it's it's your normal Seahawks game, like you said. I mean, I mean Wilson, I guess, didn't have the greatest of numbers, um, under 200 yards, but 200. There are uh, two touchdowns, and like I said, Carson got his, Lockett got his, uh, Metcalf got in the end zone a little bit. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, just another solid all-around performance. Yeah, I mean, people were hoping for Wilson to have a huge game here and probably could have, but they just didn't need it. Um, right. On the Falcons' side, they did not have Matt Ryan, but same old, same old. You know, they fall behind early and just have to pass pass heavy, and Shaw went for 460 and a touch. Julio went off with his first game without Mohamed Sanu. Um, Hooper did well again. The running game struggled, but I guess that's to be expected when, uh, when you get behind as bad as they did. Yeah, I mean, this is the same game script we, we've seen all year from the Falcons, get, you know, get behind early and then pass to catch up and, you know, make it a make it at least a game at the end. So yep. um, it doesn't really matter, I guess, if it's Schaub or, or Ryan back there. I mean, Schaub put up similar numbers of what Ryan did, uh, you know, threw the ball 52 times. I mean, 460 yards is a little ridiculous, but yeah. Um, you know, it it is what it is, man. That, that's a terrible defense. And I, I guess you don't necessarily have to be so worried about, you know, starting Hooper and, and, and Julio. And maybe I was in the minority of, of people who were, but I was a little bit worried about them without Ryan. But same old, same old for Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, I dropped Julio a little bit in my rankings when I, when I heard Matt Ryan was out, but it wasn't too much. I dropped him to like 10 overall instead of I had him at like three overall to start. And DFS, um, I, I completely blacklisted him. So yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I get it. Chances. I get it. I mean, in DFS, I don't know if I would have paid up for that either. So I, I get that. Moving on here, Eagles and Bills. This was probably a huge surprise uh, today to, to many, including myself. The Eagles took this one 31-13. to 
Um, you know, if you hear 31 points, right, you're probably thinking, ooh, Wentz went off. No, this was a ground and pound game. Um, you know, just just a bunch of big plays from the Eagles on the on the ground here to, to get the 31. It, you know, windy game, rainy, you know, wet, rainy game. It just it wasn't conducive to, to passing the ball. So that's what we saw. You know, the the running game here, 96 yards by Howard off 23 touches and a, and a, and a touchdown. Sanders had three for 74 and a touch, although one was like a big 60-some yard gain. So that was a big boost there for him. But, you know, he, he was targeted in the, in the passing game a bunch. I mean, Sanders did leave this game, so that's something to look out for. But, I mean, What's your take on this offense? I mean, the passing game, this you know, just didn't really get it done. Is it, you know, this is what we expected from the passing game this week, or is this more of the weather? Uh, this is a weird game, like like you said. Um, I mean, the Bills have a, a solid defense, um, so I didn't expect you know the Eagles to do anything crazy, but. I mean, they're so hard to predict. And, you know, from, from a fantasy angle, it's like, who do you really trust on this team anymore? I mean, you, you, I, I wouldn't trust Wentz week to week. He, he's, you know, matchup dependent. Um, you can't trust Howard and Sanders, obviously. Um, you know, they got a whole bunch of guys to throw to. Ertz all of a sudden... Um, Ever since, uh, maybe I'm giving too much credit to, to the Lions, but ever since the Lions kind of gave a little blueprint for how to shut them down, uh, Goddard's been a better yes, fantasy yes, option. Yes. So I don't know who to trust going forward. Um, I mean, Sanders obviously looked like the the best fantasy option um, on the team, especially today. But, I mean, I guess we'll see what happens with that injury. Yeah, I'll tell you, I ended up, Last minute, swapped out Wentz for uh, Tannehill in, uh, in one of my leagues. Um, that league, like, everybody has two quarterbacks except for me, and I'm looking at it going, like, I really don't want to play Wentz against the Bills. And then all the weather came up, and I was like, nah, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I ended up dropping uh, MVS here in the Packers, and it was a tough drop, but, I mean, MVS really has them doing a whole lot, so I don't feel like I'll miss him. There's a bunch of receivers out there that I can go get that will replace him if I need to. Um, moving on to the Bills side, big struggle here on this side. Just just nothing here, which is kind of shocking considering how bad the Eagles D is. But I, but I guess it sort of makes sense considering the the passing wasn't really, you know, anything that you had to worry about today, um, you know, because of the weather. Um, so, you know, Allen did throw for two scores, but only 169 yards. They couldn't get anything going on the ground game. But, I mean, they, that's what the Eagles are good at is stopping the run. So I, I think it. Because I think this was a huge weather factor is is why the Eagles took this one. Yeah, I mean, I, I say that's pretty fair. Um, I guess my main takeaway, and 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 I said this before, um, you know, Allen and everyone else on the Browns or Browns, <laughs> everyone else on the Bills, um, you know, you're never going to be able, I don't think, to rely on them for for ever having a monster game. So, um, I mean, I, I do like, you know, I do like Brown. I like. Mm-hmm. Beasley, depending on the matchup a little bit. Uh, he scored. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, Allen is what he is at this point. I, I think, at least for the remainder of this year, he's going to be a guy that you're going to get pretty consistent contributions from. He's never probably going to kill you, but he's definitely never going to win anything for you. So, um, you know, if you own him, I don't see you being able to, to necessarily move him or rely on them to, you know, win a matchup for you. But, um, for the most part, you know, between Allen and Brown, they're not going to kill you if you if you're in a position where you have to play them uh, most weeks. Yeah, I totally agree. Moving on here, Chargers Bears. Chargers took this one 17 to 16 with you know uh, a hobbled Keenan Allen. He came out and kind of did Keenan Allen things, I guess. Seven for 53. You know, the yardage wasn't there, but. Saw 10 targets. That was actually pretty surprising considering all we heard before this game was that he was going to be limited, limited snaps, and everybody was on the Mike Williams train. And, you know, I, I was kind of right there. I moved him up my rankings at the end, shoved Allen way down. Uh, that was a mistake, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, Mike Williams did not did not do what I think everybody thought. I mean, what's your, what's, I think that's the story there with, with the Chargers today. So what, what's your thought? 
Yeah, so I mean, I've definitely been the conductor of that Mike Williams train. Um, last week was a week where I was pretty sure he was going to you know, have that Will Fuller game, um, or maybe we'll call it the Marvin Jones game, um, and he obviously did not. This week, I, I stuck with him. I didn't have nearly as, as much exposure to him um, as I had you know, the past week, um, but, but I had more than most people. So, you know, I, I thought this was a really, really sneaky spot for him to have a big game potentially. Um, and I was actually happy that um, Allen wasn't inactive for the game. I know even as even into late last night, um, he was doubtful. I mean, he was listed as questionable, but they didn't think he was going to play. Um, so I was happy that that Allen was actually in there to kind of at least garner some attention. But I mean, right. Williams didn't have a bad day, but he didn't do anything to significantly help you. So no. that Williams game is coming. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when it is, yeah. um, but, but it's coming. It's, it's gonna be like Marvin Jones. Nobody knows when it's gonna yep. happen. You're, he's gonna be on your bench, and then yep. everybody will start him, and then he'll do what Marvin Jones did today, and that's nothing. Yep. We'll get to that. Uh, Bears sixteen. Um, David Montgomery twenty seven <laughs> carries. I'll say that again because I don't think anybody's gonna believe me. Twenty seven carries. <laughs> well, but but you know what though? It, it's crap. not that it was twenty seven carries either. It was an efficient twenty seven carries. Yeah, so he, he didn't go touch, dude. Yeah, he did twenty seven for twenty, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was uh that's a great stat line for Montgomery and you know, I've I've had him on my bench for, you know, one a team and I, I started him like one week and just I couldn't pull the trigger to start him ever again and I don't know, maybe I'll I'll change my tune, but uh I think I would personally want to see something close to this again before I can trust the Bears. I don't know if I can trust trust Matt Nagy in that offense, man. No, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> that I mean, I do like Allen Robinson. Um, right. I mean, he's Just been pretty hog. consistent. Yeah, so this was a little bit of a down game for him. But, I mean, week in and week out, he's been as consistent as anybody. Right. Um, it hasn't blown anything up, but kind of hard to it in that offense with the way that they play. Mm. But I mean, DFS wise season league. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I would trust Allen Robinson pretty much every week if you got him. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Uh, giants and your lions here. Lions pulled it out. 31, 26. Start with the giants here. Saquon Barkley, just a beast again, dude. Uh, 64 yards receiving or rushing, 79 yards receiving off eight catches and a touch. I mean, he's at offense. I mean, not now, now I will say, you know, Tate did all right. You know, 10 targets. Of course, we, you know, we've got no Sterling Shepard again. Slayton scored twice, but, you know, those were his only two catches. So that was a kind of a bummer to, you know, Tate owners and things like that. But, uh, I mean, the offense did well here overall. Like, it, you know, if you look at Jones' numbers, like the numbers are nice, but really it wasn't that great of a day if you look at like the percentage completion or the completion percentage, bleh, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, the story is just Barkley being a beast again. Like, he, he's the guy that you really can trust week in and week out, and there's no doubt about it, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, Barkley's insane. Um, I mean, just, you know, he, that guy that guy not only passes, you know, the, the eye test, but – even if you're someone who just is looking at, you know, box scores and stats, you know, you, you know, you're impressed there too. Right. Um, but I mean, the, the takeaway for me on this end is that basically the, the giants were playing from behind all day. And so when you look at Jones's numbers, um, you know, he didn't throw a pick, um, but that's not a very good Lions defense. Uh, yeah. 300 yards, four touchdowns. I mean, that, you know, that's a hell of a day, but I wouldn't read too much into that and, and think that, you know, he's kind of turned the corner. Yeah, I mean, I know a bunch of people who probably had to stream quarterbacks this week because people who had, you know, guys like Wentz and and uh, Jano Jones was one of those guys. So if you pulled the trigger there, you know, you were right once again. Uh, on the line side, Galladay big game after Jones kind of stole the stole the show last week. Of course, Jones, as I said, kind of did his disappearing act, which I sort of predicted. The big story here though is that Detroit backfield. What the hell? Like everybody See, was going bonkers off Ty Johnson, me included. Wow. Like what in earth? Listen, he got Lions, Lions can't run the ball, but it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> who's this Trey Tra, whatever the crap his name is? Dude got Carson. signed ten ten days ago and freaking gets more carries than Ty Johnson, who's been there all along. Like total garbage, man. Total garbage. Well, I mean, 
John, Johnson's not a workhorse. Um, and I, 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 don't I don't think anybody thought that, but I think a lot of people, you know, expected him to be kind of the, the lead with McKissick getting a bunch of passing. Then this Carson guy comes in and just ruins the whole thing. <laughs> well, I mean, again, that, that's that's people. I mean, so, listen, I, I'm I'm as big on matchups as anybody, a hundred percent. Okay. With that being said, sometimes even the best matchups don't mean shit because the Lions, I'm telling you, cannot run the ball. Now they actually look pretty good. Um, I mean, Carson had some nice runs, and then I don't know why they pulled the plug on him. And Ty Johnson was okay. Um, but and the he Lions, had some, he had one called back, right? Like a big run called back, and then another one, like a touchdown pass called back or something like that. He had, he had, he he could have had a much bigger day, but it just wasn't. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not going to happen. The, the The script that we see today is pretty much what you're going to see the rest of the year from the Lions. Um, it, it's going to go back and forth between Galladay and Jones. Um, I, I love Galladay, and that dude seriously has probably got the strongest hands in football. But he's not elite enough to where you can, you know, absolutely consider him, you know, a, a top ten receiver every week. But depending on the right matchup, he sure can be. Yeah, um, you know, a, a good a good corner is going to hold him back, and then that's when Jones is going to get his chances. Um, so yeah, I, I think this is about what you expect to see the rest of the year from the Lions. Don't don't start Lions running back unless you're, you know, unless you've lost a bet or something. Uh, yeah. Um, I wasn't you going still... to this week, but I, I did. No. I, I lost Kamara in, in one league and Johnson was all I had. It was Johnson or Gord. I took the chance on Johnson. I mean, listen, I, I mean, I think, if I'm a... I think in that case, right. I, I had, I had to have made the right decision at least. It just didn't work <laughs> out. I mean, you got to take the chance on Johnson against the giants. <laughs> I mean, if I'm a lion's homer here and I wasn't even considering touching Johnson, nobody should have. Ugh. All right, moving on. I'm I'm angry on that one. Bucks, Titans, Bucks twenty three, Titans twenty seven. Look, Winston's overall stat line and fantasy points is gonna look okay here, but dude, Winston was garbage, dude. Um early on, you know, two early picks, a fumble, it was ugly. Um, ends up with three hundred and two. Uh both of those going to Evans. Evans just ate up this Titan secondary. Um, but I mean, it's so dude, I mean the, it's just going to be volume for these, these receivers all year long. Winston's just so trash. Um, you just hope he doesn't pull one of those six interception games again, but he looked real close to starting on that path today, but it just, he righted the ship just enough to make Evans good. Uh, Godwin didn't do much today, unfortunately, but, uh, Evans, Dev, Evans definitely ate, but I mean, well, I mean, what else is there on the, on this Bucks team? No, I mean, you know, um, Godwin had been tearing it up the last three, right. four weeks. I mean, all year, but specifically the last few weeks. And so I finally drank the the Godwin Kool Aid and and had quite a decent amount of exposure to him today. And you know, shame on me because that's the day that that Mike Evans reminds everyone, you know, who he is. Yeah. Um. And I, I mean. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure, you know, especially if you're in season long, if you have Evans, you're obviously not sitting him, period. Nope. But but DFS wise, it's hard to <laughs> decipher, you know, is it gonna be Godwin? Is it gonna be Evans? I guess depending on the matchup, it could be both. Um but yeah, Winston is gonna be a, a volume guy. So, you know, for fantasy purposes, that's not the end of the world. Um, you're gonna get your hits and misses, and then you're gonna get kind of your in betweens every now and again too. So yeah. Um, I, I think today was not that greatly unexpected, other than the fact that, you know, Godwin had been out playing Evans pretty drastically up until this point. But Evans can do this any week, um, yep. any Absolutely. week at all. Absolutely. So on the Titans side here, you know, I told you it started Tannehill. And yeah, he, you know, he had a better overall fantasy day, but uh, it it wasn't, I mean, three touchdowns, but only a buck 93. Um, you know, uh, none of the receivers did a whole lot. Uh, Jonas Smith actually was was the was the star of the team. Really, six for seventy eight in a touch without Delaney Walker. You know, Jonas Smith was the guy that a bunch of people liked last year. They liked him a couple times this year when Walker's been iffy. Just never really got it going. You know, he's got the talent. I don't know. I mean, is this is this like his stepping stool to to being the guy that a bunch of people thought he was gonna be? 
I mean, I, I think it's, you know, the, the old cliche where, you know, it just takes talent and it takes opportunity. So I don't think anyone, well, I don't think most people would say that Smith is an untalented player. Um, so, you, you know, you finally get him an opportunity and I mean, six for 78 and a touchdown that, that's for a tight end. That's pretty damn good. You know, I mean, I mean, hell, mo- most leagues that's, you know, 20 points. So you get 20 points from your tight end and you're pretty satisfied, especially when it's a guy who, um, you probably got off the wave warrior. I will say, um, I streamed him and Tannehill in the same damn league. Yeah. Ooh, makes yeah. sense, man. <laughs> Who would have uh, thought, huh? You know, Six right? weeks ago, you I'm, sitting, you here go, I'm sitting here going like, I, I feel sick in my stomach streaming two Titans offensive players, but I'm desperate. Yeah. I got to do yeah. something. So moving on, Broncos, Colts, Broncos lose 13 to 15. Um, not much going here, man. Just really not a whole lot. To, I mean, let's just, on, on the Broncos side, I mean, let's just take the first thought to the first game without Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, what what are we looking at here, man? Um, I mean, it's the same thing that that happened last year. I, I'm not as big on on Sutton um, in retrospect, and I know when when we did the Balls Deep podcast, I said Sutton's going to be 100 percent exposure for me. Period. And then I had a little bit of a, a, I reminisced to last year a little bit, and I was remembering what happens when when Sanders got hurt and and Sutton became the the facto number one, mm-hmm. and he didn't he didn't do shit. Yeah, and so I got scared, and I thought, "Oh man, well he's got Flacco throwing the ball to him, and doesn't really have anyone to take the pressure off of him." Yeah, you know what? I didn't completely avoid him, but I I, I shied away from him, and I, I think, you know, I think that that's probably what you're going to see a lot of. The, the, you know, Deshaun Hamilton on the other side of the ball isn't going to take away much attention. Uh, dude, um, I'm shocked. Actually, that I'm shocked that Deshaun Hamilton only got one target the entire game. Like I, I like. Deshaun has been able to like be a super sneaky sleeper, like pick up and stash type player in season long leagues at least. He still is though. But, I mean, man, nothing today, just nothing. You no, know, I think it's, it's going to open up league. more for more for Fant than anybody else. Like yeah, um, I mean, it did. I mean, targets today. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I don't necessarily think that Sutton's going to be the main benefactor. Is as weird as it's going to sound. Um, hear me out here. I think that the loss of Sanders is, is more of a benefit for Lindsey and Freeman than anybody um, because I think that's going to give Freeman some more target. I think Freeman and, and Fant are the guys that get that get that, the extra target share. Yeah, no, that's um, fair. And then I think that opens up maybe a couple more carries for Lindsey um, just to even out the you know the snap count um, to get the touches for fantasy purposes, you know, a little more evened out. So. Sure, that makes um, sense. Yeah, I, I'm no longer on the Sutton um, bandwagon for the rest of the year. <laughs> Uh, so on the Colts side, you know, Brissett came off like his best career game ever, came falling back to earth pretty quickly this game with 15 for 25, 202. I mean, is this just the Denver defense kind of coming alive today or is this Brissett regressing a little bit? No, I feel like I, we talk about this every week. I mean, that that's how the Broncos are going to play the game, you know? Um, so if you're, I mean... You know, if you, if you're opposing the Broncos, just know that you know Lindsey and Freeman are going to get about 15 carries a piece, and they're going to try to beat you, you know, 13, 10, and control the clock. So you know you're not going to see you know 45, 50 passes unless they're playing like Atlanta or somebody who just can't stop anybody. Right. All right, moving on. Bengals, Rams, Rams take this one, 24 to 10. The Bengals. Not a bad offensive showing. I'll, I'll be honest. Even though they put up, only put up ten points, you know they put up some stats. Uh, biggest shock to me is Mixon actually did something today, man. Seventeen for sixty six, caught a touchdown pass, made me look pretty dumb. Is my sit call this week? Uh, I've just been kind of soured on Mixon big time. I mean, I mean, I would say for good reason at least. But uh, uh, I mean, is this something? We're looking to be like, oh, man, maybe Mixon's figuring it out, or is this just, nah, don't worry about it. This is a one-off. So uh, to answer your question, let me just put this in, into perspective. So Joe Mixon had a 66-yard rush day, and we're talking about, hey, can we trust him now? I mean, he, he didn't even have that good of a day. He had a good day for what he's been doing all year. Yeah, I mean, but, I was um, watching more of this game, and they were cutting to it in red zone a lot early when it was a close game, and I guess he got you know kind of taken out of the game because they got they fell behind. But 
Mm-hmm. I guess I look at it as from he looked good and he looked good early. So I mean, I'll, I'll take a little bit of hope out of that. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. Don't don't do it, man. Just <laughs> avo- avoid, I, I, avoid, avoid. Yeah, I sort of agree with you. I just kind of wanted to throw it out there. Um, you listed the fact that you know this Erickson guy um, kind of took the lead in the receiving core for second week in a row. So, I mean, I would say we got to pay attention to him at this point. Um, at least, at least pick up and stash if he's out there. Like you never know. It's, it's where I guarantee you got more junk on your bench than that. Um, on the, on the Ram side here, they look good, man. They look real good. And Cooper cup looked real good. I picked him to be my number one receiver last week. And that was bad bad call all around i mean that was the most that was the most worthless looking rams offense we've seen in a long time comes out this week seven for 220 and a touch i mean he just was left wide open a few times burning through some people just carving up the cincy secondary left and right I, it's unbelievable how he's come back i mean he's easily a must start every week i mean could we possibly say top five receiver the rest of the week the rest of the way top five. Oh man I mean, um, fantasy top five no i know i know um sure i, I could i could argue that i, I wouldn't guy, put man. up a, i wouldn't put up a big fight um i mean because he's gonna have big days like this uh and yeah i mean god man but he's just one of those guys where you know, even even when you watch the game, you know, a lot of times his numbers just even surpass exactly what you see on the field. Right. Um, and I'm not saying he's he's not a good real life receiver, but he he's he's an even better fantasy receiver. He he's in the perfect offense. Um, he's a smart kid. Um, you know, know, knows what he's doing. He's definitely one of those guys who gets the most out of his talent. Um, and so yeah, I mean, if you want to call him a top five receiver the rest of the way, I I, I can't really argue with that. Yeah, no doubt. All right, moving on. We got Cardinals and Saints. Saints roll over the Cardinals, thirty-one nine. Um, just nothing going here. I guess Christian Kirk returning for the for the Cardinals was the good thing. Uh, other than that, it was pretty much all bad. Um, and the most bad was Chase Edmonds. People were all over this guy, and for good reason. After the game he had last week, yes, I get the opponent last week, but. Don't expect people to fall and just disappear like he did. Went seven for eight. Seven rushes for eight yards. Caught two passes for five yards. I mean, you started him, you got burned and burned bad. So I mean which Chase Edmonds can we expect to get here if David Johnson's out more games than just this one? Um, it's going to be more likely to be last week than, than this week in general. Now, listen, man, the, the Saints defense is probably the most underrated unit in football right now. Um, and just that team overall is just scary. Um, I mean, with Breeze is back now, so they have a top tier offense. They have a elite defense. I mean, they're not Patriots elite, but I mean, they're, they're, they're shutting everybody down, man. Like that Cardinals offense even if they're not the most efficient, they're high volume. So, you yeah. know, they, they score and they put up numbers because they play quick. And the yeah. Saints are like, nope, not today. Um, so, Saints, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Saints uh, slowed things down big time. And you could tell that was really affecting mm-hmm. affecting the card. I mean, the, the type of possession was insane the first half. I saw the number and I didn't see the end of the game. But I, I know the beginning, it was just heavily favored in, in, uh, in favor of the – of the Saints, so that's a big part of it, I think. So you're right on there. On the Saints side of the ball here, the return of Drew Brees and no Kamara, but I mean, we saw them just, I mean, just efficient, good. I mean, they they were good with Bridgewater, but I mean, I think this just makes just enough of a difference that it's just they move into elite team territory. What do you think? Yeah, for sure. I mean, th- this isn't a fantasy relevant take, but um, Patriots Saints uh, Super Bowl man. Uh, it's just that that's what's happening. Yeah, and I am looking at that uh, time of possession here. It's 37, almost 38 minutes to 22 minutes. And that's Oof. without Kamara on that's the field. Who, Kamara. That's do we not say he's easily top five running back, right? I mean, yeah, easily? Right. Top, top three? I mean, God, and no, no Kamara. I mean, not that Latavius Murray, Murray is the awesome sack of potatoes. Today, Second week in a row. Sitting yeah. on my bench um, in the league I lost in. I only lost yeah, one and, league, and that was the one. 
as soon as Kamara comes back, um, you know, I, I don't see him necessarily splitting any more carries than they have to. When and when Kamara's healthy, Kamara's getting his touches. Yeah, pretty and much. And will go back to, you know, you know, breathes a side piece. So <laughs> pretty much. All right, Jets and Jags. We got the Jaguars twenty nine, Jets fifteen. Um, you know, Donald looked like he was gonna be okay early and then eh, three picks. Not a great day. Bell though, that was I mean this was the big story. This was the one where I actually started Bell over Murray and lost because of it. Um, yeah, tough blow. Yeah, I mean, okay. it's hard to sit. It's hard to sit Le'Veon Bell, especially in a PPR league, right? I mean, yeah. nine for 23, nothing in the air either, man. It's just a bad game all around. Um, I, I really got nothing. I, I don't really know what happened here. I mean, because the Jags has not been an elite defense, so I don't really know what went on here. No, it's a weird one because I'm not a Jets fan at all, but I feel like I'm a Jets homer because I love Darno. Um, I like Bell. I like Crowder. I like Anderson. I like Demarius Thomas. And yet you kind of can't trust any single one of them. Um, I mean, this week they had six receivers that had either four, five, or six targets, and five of them had you know three to five catches. So he just threw the ball a little bit to everybody. And that's okay. Um, I mean, that's <sighs> – that's well, fine. I mean, I mean, it sucks for fantasy, but that's fine that's to like win saying. ball games and be good. Like, and that's okay. But Bell but yeah, they, does Bell get points. nothing? I mean, mm-hmm. that's and I was sticks. in on I was in on Crowder this week too. Um, I mean, if we remember that first game of the year with Darnell and Crowder, those two looked like they were going to set the world on fire. <laughs> man, um, you were and my then, sleepover receiver for the year, man. I was calling him a wide yeah. receiver three to start the year. I was like, you watch, He's yep. Gonna, Target hog in the first game, I was like, "Yeah, we'll watch it." No, yep. no damn it. And, right. and Darnell back <laughs> and Darnell back and healthy, and and I I was in on Crowder. He was a guy that you know I thought was going to be fairly low owned, correct? That I thought could easily, you know, I could see him getting, you know, ten and one hundred and twenty today. I not saying it was going to happen, but for his his cost and his low ownership, I thought that was a sneaky little play, and right. I was wrong. Um, yeah, it happens. Uh, on the Jags side here, I mean, typical Jags, Fournette kind of is the, I mean, he's the probably the best weapon they have on this team. But, you know, 146 yards total from scrimmage. But once again, no touchdowns. It's just the same story, man. I don't know what to do here. Uh, I mean, you'll PPR leagues, you'll love it because he got you seven, seven receptions. So, I mean, he's still giving you good points. But, man, he gets in the end zone. That's a monster day, right? Yeah, I mean, we're still waiting for that two, three touchdown oh, game it's, with it's with those same it's numbers. Easy and to come, man. Yeah, I mean, again, talent and opportunity. So he's got all the talent. He gets all the opportunity. Um, he just, man, it's not like they don't give him the ball inside the five yard line either. He no. gets the ball. They just, they just cannot put the ball in the end zone running it. They just can't right now. And I, I mean, we're what? We're eight games in. Um, nine for some one touchdown. Now. So is that wait? Does he even have one or is it zero? I, um, I, I, I assume up. he has. I assume he has one. I, I, I believe he up. has one. But yes, he I mean, one. You know, I mean, the, the end of the year, his his touchdown stats probably are. You know, we're too far into the year for him to catch up. I I really don't see him in that offense. Not that it's a terrible. You could offense, pull a Julio. But, Last year he was pretty dismal the first half and then just take I mean, off, right? Could it, happen. It's not impossible, <laughs> but at this point in time, you know, uh, he's he's going to be good for yardage. Um, and then you just kind of you know hope and pray for the touchdown. That's what's going to make or break, you know, his ownership, whether it's season long or whether it's DFS. You know, if, if he doesn't get in the end zone, he's going to be serviceable for sure. Yeah. Um, but until he gets in the end zone, he's he's outside the top ten on a weekly basis for sure. Uh, yeah, it's rough, man. Panthers, 49ers, 49ers, 51, Panthers, 13. I mean, damn. I mean, we knew this 49ers defense was top notch, but the offense, they had to have had, I don't have the box score link here, but they had to have had a defensive touchdown or something, right? Like this just doesn't make any damn sense, does it? I guess it does. Um, yeah, because, I mean, I yeah, we'll start with the Niners because, hmm. yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm forgetting here that Coleman went off for three touchdowns rushing. Monster had one. Um, you know, Brita got hurt, so Monster came in, did his thing. And this running attack is just nasty. Coleman had four total touchdowns. 
I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I had Coleman in one league, went against him in another league that I thought I was going to win. Same league, I benched Murray. And uh, <laughs> I had like a, I had like a 30 point lead going into the afternoon games and then poof, <laughs> gone. I was like, what the hell? So, oh, well, it happens. But I mean, it's, I mean, I, I don't know. Like it, you guys got to basically start like both of the, you know, whoever the two 49er running backs who are active to start the game, the two first guys, you've got to start both of them, right? Like you can't bench these guys anymore. This running game is just so nasty. I mean, it's it's tough. So it's tough with the low I mean, volume, but they just get it done. It's just so it's so weird to have you know a, a team with you know with their record and, and you know kind of doing what they're doing, and yet from a fantasy perspective, other than George Kittle, I, I'm not really too interested in touching anyone. I mean, this this week we had nine carries, eleven carries, eleven carries for the three running backs. <laughs> I mean, do. I like Coleman the best of the bunch. Coleman, I think it's the, the most opportunity out of the whole bunch. But if, I mean, DFS wise, I, I don't, I don't trust. I don't even trust Kittle because they like to run the ball and play right. defense so much. So yeah. I, it's just so weird to have a team that's, you know, so well regarded at this point. And other than the defense, I, I just, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with them. And it's, it's like that with the Patriots too. You know the. The, the two undefeated teams you shy away from in fantasy is just kind of it's, it's illogical in, in some senses but yeah, um, it is weird it is they're just they're, they're just playing good football but it's not good fantasy football yeah i mean luckily i drafted coleman as like a as like my fourth running back in one league and he's just like a flex guy for me so so it's okay sure. i can start him yeah. there and be and be okay with it especially today <laughs> and that oh league, yeah the, league, the yeah. league i did it in the one i'm happy but the league i only needed two touchdowns from you coleman not four Calm down. Yeah, you're going to have to send some hate mail. <laughs> uh, on the Panthers' side, I mean, the only story really is just Christian McCaffrey does it again. So I think we can move on. Yep. Uh, Browns and Pats, Patriots 27, Browns 13. Dude, the Browns just – they look bad, dude. I, I don't know. Like, at this point, man, you got to worry about Mayfield, like, being the guy. I mean, did he just chirp too much in the offseason and just – he can't back it up? At this point in time, every it, until somebody proves me otherwise, that Patriots defense is disgusting, and well, I see, can't they believe that, that they got that gauntlet schedule coming up here next. Yeah, next, well, like, four I mean, five weeks. We'll see what happens. This I mean, is going to we'll be the test. Happens. I I I trust them until they give me a reason not to. I, I think the Patriots in general have have earned, you know, our respect. Now that doesn't do us a whole lot in fantasy, but right now this defense is stupid. I mean. They're a cheat code, dude. I've got them in one league, and they're averaging twenty plus points a game. It is yes. insane. I've never seen this from a fantasy defense. It's oh, now so they fun. have. Yeah, they they've had a cupcake schedule, of, you know, so far. I I get it, but again, Balls D podcast. Um, we're talking about this, and I can't remember. It was either seventh or eighth. It, they were seventh or eighth in scoring for for DraftKings purposes. So, <laughs> so I mean, nice. they're, they're outscoring defense. all, but I think it was. All but two quarterbacks. So I actually saw. Um, it's, I, it's just absurd right now, and they did it again today. Yeah, I don't know whose article it was, but they were like, "Oh, sell the Patriots defense if you own them. Sell them." I know, you know, it's crazy. They're putting up great points, but it's like if I can get a top thirty receiver or running back for the Patriots defense, do it, do it, do it now. And I'm like, I don't know, man. This might be the one time I don't do that. <sighs> right? That's like, tough. I mean, again, it's when when we start talking about that. We, we really start getting into some details. So, you know, it really depends on exactly how your team is set up, yeah. or what your what your league settings are, and so on and so forth. But I don't know if I would even say a top 30 receiver. So you're telling me that, you know, you would trade that Patriots defense for Marvin Jones? I don't no, think so. Hell you're going to no. – I mean <laughs> – I, it's tough, man, and you and you would have to be able to stream defenses so well the rest of the way because all the good ones are taken, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got to be able to find all those teams going against the Dolphins, the Redskins, you know. And it's possible you can do it the rest of the way, but I mean, and in most leagues I do stream. I don't own the Patriots in hardly any leagues that use defenses, but except for one. Uh, but it's 
you know, it's all about replacement value at that point. And so it, it's yep. tough, man, but they have been truly a cheat code. Uh, is what I called them like a few weeks ago you know, on Twitter, but moving over to the Pat side, I mean, nothing great, honestly. Um, Edelman you'll love cause you know, he scored twice, but you can't expect that every week. He's just a, he's just a PPR guy, you know, high, high volume PPR guy. So you're happy there. Um, but I mean, this was just typical Patriots defense and methodically hold the ball and, just do enough on offense to win, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, if there's one person that I would be willing to bet money does not give a shit about your fantasy football team, it's Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick, yep, absolutely. He, he, he wants to be 8-0, and he doesn't care if they win 2 nothing every week and, you know, whatever. They, yeah. they, he wants to win the game, and, you know, the, they're capable of doing whatever they want. If they wanted James White to run for 100 yards and, you know, catch 10 balls for 100 yards, it would happen. Yeah, um, pretty much. It's just whatever the hell they want to do um, is what the hell they're going to do. So uh, I think Edelman's proven himself to be pretty reliable. You know, I mean, he's like the one guy Gordon, I, I yep. draft, and that's yep. the only guy I'll, I'll I'll even remotely go after. So. Yep, I mean, people come and go, come and go, and Edelman is is there to stay. So yeah, um, Michelle's pretty safe, but is not. He's not lighting the world on fire, but no, he starts to become T D dependent. I mean he yeah. gets practice. Yeah, I mean but. he's fine. I mean seventy four yards. He he's his yardage has been okay, but it's not gonna win you anything. It's just he's more of a he's more of a flex guy if you have him. Mm-hmm. Last game here, Raiders, Texans, uh Raiders twenty four, Texans twenty seven on the Raiders side. Um Carr threw three touchdowns. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, well, hey, at least they were to his own team. <laughs> true, true, very true. Disappointment, though, Jacobs, 15 for 66. I was all over Jacobs today. It just didn't happen. They got they got behind, and, and, and um, just, you know, they were shutting down Jacobs. So um, that's unfortunate. I mean, what he's a stud. We, you just go back to him, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the dude's pretty hurt too. I mean, that he's got a pretty good shoulder injury. Um, yeah, he shrugged it he, off though. He said it was nothing. Yeah, but well, of course. He, I mean, he's a tough kid. What What do you expect him <laughs> to say? You know. Uh, I mean, you would do the same thing. But yeah, I mean, listen. I don't care who it is. You know, look at Waller. You know, you're not going to go out there. You know, 16 out of 17 weeks, and you know, and and put up. Actually, I'll take you that know, back. They didn't put get up your numbers. They were winning most of this game. <laughs> uh, it, it was pretty back and forth. Yeah, it was pretty close the whole way. Um, but, you know, everyone isn't going to have, you know, 100, 100 yards rushing and a touchdown every week. You know, you're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. So, sure. I mean, 15 carries, 66 yards isn't a terrible day. It's maybe not be what you were expecting from him, but it's not like he shit the bed on you. Yeah, and on the Texans side, um, we got, you know, Watson throwing three touchdowns. Hopkins was a beneficiary of the targets and the yards. Didn't get in the end zone, but you're loving that at least from a Hopkins owner because, you know, he was sort of disappointing the first six weeks of the season. Then Fuller gets hurt, and he just blows up. So um, not that I'm hoping that Fuller never comes back as a Hopkins owner, but I'm sort of hoping Fuller never comes back. I mean, the biggest <laughs> beneficiary of all of this isn't Hopkins. I, I really think it's Fells. Yeah, dude. He's been that, dude good. Is, that dude's sneaky good. And I actually gave up um, quite a few shares of uh, Waller this week um, once once Fuller was officially out for Fells. So I didn't have I, – I think I only had him at like maybe Ballsy. 35 40% exposure. But I didn't necessarily expect two touchdowns, but I, I did figure on – a good chance of him getting, you know, 50 and, you know, five for 50 and maybe one um, against that Raiders defense. So, I mean, I was, I was more right than I thought I was going to be, but um, I, I think Fells is, is going to be the bigger, you know, benefactor, but um, depending on how long he's out, I can see stills as well, kind of stealing a big game. Uh, stills was a big disappointment, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh Kind of secondary, but also important news because people like to stream the Texans defense here and there. I don't do it anymore. JJ nope. Watts out. Defense is over for me. And it yep. happens every year. So uh, it's that time of the year. JJ Watts out. And you do not use the Texans defense anymore. But, so, you know, it is. I mean, if they get Miami, fine. But no, <laughs> no, thank you otherwise. No, and as bad as that sounds, I think that that actually is going to boost up that offense a little bit. Absolutely just, just because it does. that's going to make that defense a little bit worse. And that's gonna probably have to make them score a little bit more. So yep. 
It'll hurt I mean, Hyde, and it'll help all the running and all the receiving, all the passing yes. game. So you got it. Myself as a Watson Hopkins owner in various places, I am okay. Mm-hmm. So, all right, man, that's what all we got. I already complained about my uh, my Coleman, so I won't say it again. But uh, hope you all did well in week one or week eight. Week, wow. Well, I hope they did good in week one, yeah, too. Yeah, me too. I hope you all did well in week one. Yep, I meant <laughs> week eight. Man, I'm tired. All right. Have a good night, everyone, and see you all next week.